Hello to everyone in the Crime Spree Nation. We're at Murder and Mayhem in Milwaukee Crime Fiction Festival with supernatural suspense writer Laura Benedict. Laura's about to field some questions about zombies competing in the roller derby. And which song is best on the pipe organ? Cat and I Joe? Or the theme song from Shaft? So let's get at it. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk with Crime Spree readers today, Laura. You love interacting with readers and always seem to manage to have a great time at bookstore signings and literary festivals. What is it about coming to Murder and Mayhem in Milwaukee that you enjoy so much? You know, the thing about coming to Murder and Mayhem is, well, first of all, I've never been to Milwaukee. And I love the vibe here. It's so, it's so laid back, you know, lots of um, Midwestern friendliness. And also, you know, when you're in the midst of crime fiction, crime lovers, you know, I mean, you just really feel at home. And, uh, you know, the crime spree folks, I mean, it's a family. And, it is a family. And so I feel like one of the family. So I love it. Wow, that's great. Your latest novel, Charlotte's Story, the chilling prequel to Bliss House, dropped on October 15th to rave reviews. One reviewer called it the perfect level of creepy. What is it about you that makes you want to scare people half to death? You know, I don't really think of it as wanting to scare people. I think I really just want to let people scare themselves mm. as much as they want to be scared. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't like get a thrill out of, you know, making people feel terrified unless that is, that's what they want, you know, right. I mean, because I, I love those sort of safe thrills, right? you know, and, and when, when I write about ghosts, um, you know, and I've, I've had a couple of demon stories um, that they, those things are not real. And, okay, maybe they're a little real, but <laughs> I'm not here to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I want to give people a safe space to get those thrills. I mean, like, I hate roller coasters, oh. but there are roller coasters for a reason. Be because people want to be physically thrilled. And I like to be thrilled in what I read. I'm not, yeah, no, no scary rides for me. <laughs> so a good scary book is, is uh, I feel like I'm helping some, I'm, an, I'm a scare enabler. Oh, that's great. That's a great terminology, <laughs> scare enabler. Paranormal elements make frequencies appearances in your Southern Gothic styled novels. Have you had personal experiences with the paranormal? You know, it's really funny you should ask that because I, this morning, I was in a, an unfamiliar room and I just had a sense, there, there were sounds that were so unfamiliar to me that they felt like they came from somewhere else. What kind of sounds were they? It, they were actually kind of very normal sounds. It wasn't a machine, mm -hmm. but I just had the sense that they were human, in, oh. human induced and petrified me totally petrified me. And I don't know if it was just because I'd woken up early and I woke up, you know, and I was just awake like at six o'clock. Was which that is at the hotel in, here? At, 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 yes. And, and I won't say which hotel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and, but as far as, um, it, in my past, I, I'd been married about three years. We had a very young daughter and my husband, uh, had taken a summer job teaching at a prep school uh, called the Hill School in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and we were staying in a house that was, you know, probably built in like 1910, mm -hmm. and it was a faculty house, <clears throat> and I woke up, and I like sat up, and I was completely awake, and it was beautiful bright day, and I was alone in the house, mm -hmm. and I looked down the hall, and there was this elderly man, and he was wearing a brown suit, and he's holding his hat in front of him like this. And he looked at me and he just smiled. And I blinked and he was gone. Oh, really? And I, I'm really glad that my, and, they, and later they told me who they thought it was, a man who had, had not lived in that house, but who had taught at the school. And you know, those schools are very much like family. And I was really glad that my experience was a positive one, mm -hmm. you know, and, right. and that helps keep, helps me remember 
um, like as I'm working on the Bliss House novels, that not all ghosts are bad. Right. You know, that, that we have this image of them, but they're not all bad. Interesting. Uh, Murder and Mayhem's new home, the Irish Cultural Heritage Center, which was built in 1887 and is on the National Registry of Historic Places, is the new location for the, our setting. I can't help but picture it in the setting of one of your books. Is this moody atmosphere inspiring or deals for your work in progress? Well, it's just an inspiring building, period. I mean, it's, you know, to be an old church and to look at that gorgeous stained glass. Um, I grew up in the Roman Catholic Church and with a lot of stained glass and and a lot of the mystery in my work comes from the sense of mystery of faith. You know, that was the first real mysteries I knew. And so I, you know, I, I feel very at home in places like this and old churches in general. It's, uh, it's a little awkward because you know, like I have written about demons, mm -hmm. which actually the church wrestles with demons, right? right. Um, so it feels awkward, but it doesn't feel so bad, you know? Um, but it, it is quite inspiring. It's a gorgeous building. Yeah, it's a beautiful setting. This location has a 4,000 pipe pipe organ. Which would you rather hear played on it? The Mexican hat dance, Inagata de Vida, Cotton Eye Joe, or the theme from Shaft? To go with the theme from Shaft. Theme from Shaft, really? Absolutely. Interesting. Now, would you slow it down for pipe organ more appropriateness, or would you keep it at a quick tempo? You know, I would leave that up to the organist because okay. any pipe organist right. that would take it on, I think, would have very strong ideas. Yeah, about they probably how it have some sound. good skills too. Right? <laughs> Don't mess with the pipe organist. As someone who researches the supernatural, you understand non-human entities. So, if the Brew City Bruisers, Milwaukee's roller derby team, had an opening for a blocker, which supernatural being would you recommend for the position? A vampire, zombie, werewolf, or witch? I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with a witch. At oh. first, I was thinking vampire because yeah. they have those you know speed skills, like you right. know that you yeah, know they're, they're quick. there. But you know, I'm thinking like um, Samantha. From Bewitched, okay, which was my favorite series growing up. Elizabeth Montgomery would be just such a badass roller derby chick. She would be a great roller derby character. Yeah. Yes, yes, she would be great. She she would be my pick. Right. Would you allow her to cast spells on the other people? Totally. The oh, okay. I yeah. thought Darren was pathetic. <laughs> she could, I'm like, I was always like, Darren, That's great. get over yourself. Right. Really. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with Crime Street today. I really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you again next year. Thank you. Thank you.